Good morning. Well, I had trouble sleeping again last night. Rarely is it two or three nights in a row. And this is the second night that I had trouble sleeping, so I'm sorry if I sound groggy. Usually my voice is like this when I'm tired. So, um, yeah, so second night in a row that I've sat in bed all night and couldn't sleep. I, know, I, just, I just have like an anxious feeling in my spirit. And I've been, I saw the comments and I'm not the only one. So, um, at least I don't have to do anything today. So, and driving tonight, <laughs> forget about it. Plus, we got rain. No sleep and rain. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to read, I feel my heart to read a little bit from 1 Samuel 5. And the Philistines took to the, took to, the Ark of God, and brought it to Ebenezer, unto Ashdod. When the Philistines took the Ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon, and set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the Ark of the Lord, and they took Dagon and set him in his place again. And when they arose early in the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Therefore, neither the priest of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashdod, and he destroyed them and smote them with emeralds, even Ashdod and the coasts thereof. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon of God, our God. They sent therefore and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them and said, What shall we do with the ark of God of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of God of Israel be carried about unto God. And they carried the ark of the God of Israel about thither. And it was so that they had carried it about. The hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. And he smote the men of the city, both small and great. And they held emeralds in their secret parts. Therefore, they sent the ark of God to Ekron. And it came to pass, as the ark of God came into Ekron, and the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought about the ark of God of Israel to us, to slay us and our people. So they sent and gathered together all the Lord, Lord of the Philistines, and said, Send away the ark of God of Israel, and let it go again to his own place, that it slay us not, and our people, for there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy, was very heavy there. And the men that died not were smitten with the emeralds, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. Sometimes the King James versions are hard to understand, um, so I put up meaning. The meaning. 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 5. Let's see here. Sorry, my phone just skipped. Shows us how even in the bleakest moments, God is unstoppable in his pursuit of his children. When we start 1 Samuel 5, the Ark of the Covenant has been captured by Israel's mortal enemies, the Philistines. And that might be even worse than it sounds. Sorry, I had to pause it for a second. You might hear the um, the truck there. It's trash day, so there you might hear the truck in the background. So, um, so yeah, let's see the meaning of that. One 
1 Samuel 5 shows us how even in the bleakest moments, God is unstoppable in his pursuit of his children. When we start 1 Samuel 5, the Ark of the Covenant has been captured by Israel's mortar enemies, the Philistines, and that might be even worse than it sounds. Even in our bleakest moments, God is unstoppable in his pursuit of his children. Whatever you've done in your past, you can be forgiven when you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Some people think, um, you know, I was speaking to a friend of mine yesterday, and if you keep her in your prayers, um, some people think, well, everybody's forgiven automatically. Uh, Jesus is, I replied to her and said, Jesus is the only way to heaven. He's the only way to God the Father. All we can do is plant the seeds, you know. That friend of mine that uh, committed suicide a couple of months ago. Um, he had a very um, difficult life. I don't want to go into details as to what happened. Um, but I tried. I, I, I saw a good man deep down there. I saw a good man. And... I said, please accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. He said, I saved myself. But you never know in those last moments if people accept the Lord. You know, I, I pray he did. But, you know, if we, all we can do is plant the seeds. But right here, right now, you can accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Your sins will be washed clean and you will be rapture ready, which I pray is soon. I pray. It, it's going to be soon. We don't know when. But, um... Sorry, I'm, I'm half asleep. I gotta say, right now I am half asleep. So, so I'm, I've barely had any sleep in two days. Um, so, um, so I apologize if I mess up my words. What I meant to say is, it is soon. I pray it's today. Well, if we're gonna pray when, when the rapture is, I pray it's today. But um, don't don't lose hope. Jesus is coming for us. We don't know when, but we know it's soon. So hang in there, because we're all meeting at the marriage supper. Now, I'm, I'm Catholic. I haven't been in the Catholic Church in a long time. I never believed in a Pope. Never believed in praying to Mary. The Catholic Church, they have, if you've been in the Catholic Church, they have candles to light. If there's family members you want to pray for. And they have pews that you kneel, kneel on. They have a statue of Jesus, of course. But they also have a statue of Mary Joseph. Mary and Joseph. To kneel before Mary and Joseph. You don't do that. You do not do that. You do not kneel before Mary and Joseph. I love to Jasmine just woke up. Here you go. Is your collar? There you go. Jasmine says hello. There you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, Jasmine just woke up. You do not kneel before Mary and Joseph. Confession. Never been. I confess my Lord and Savior. You know, and some people said, well, you don't have to confess. He already knows what you did. True, he already knows what, what, we, what we did. But um, God's not going to say, you confessed and I already knew what you did. Be gone. He's, he's not going to say that, you know. Well, yes, for, forgiveness of our sins. Some people say you don't have to ask for forgiveness. When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, your sins are washed clean. 100% true. Again, God's not going to say, you asked for forgiveness. Be gone. Be gone. He's, he's not going to say that, you know. But th this Pope, though, we all have seen the video. Where when he first came in, that lightning struck. I, this, this I never liked this pope. I never liked him. He the, the day he came in, I said that guy's creepy. I I just felt it. I saw it. Well, now the end begins. This came out uh, twenty four hours ago. Pope Francis is ruthlessly purging Roman cardinals who oppose his pro-LGBTQ mandates as he continues to create the affirming Catholic Church. Does he, did he not remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Hmm. 
Pope Francis has kicked conservative U.S. Cardinal Raymond Burke out of his Vatican apartment, stripped him of his salary after he criticized the pontiff's pro-LGBTQ plus stance. Wow. At this point, it's obvious that the Roman Catholic Church, started by the Caesars during the time of the closing days of the Roman Empire, is taking a page from the book of Gaius, Gaius, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing this, G-A-I-U-S, Caesar Augustus, whatever that land's last name is, better known as Caligula, and transitioning into being LGBTQ, plus affirming <clears throat> under the leadership of Pope Francis, U.S. Cardinal Raymond Burke just found out the hard way that going against the Pope's affirming mandates come at a cost. Revelation 17, verse 17 through 18. For God hath put... You might hear my noisy bed, I'm sorry. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. The woman which thou sawest is the great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Some people think uh, when the Bible talks about... Um, the great whore, but it it's over many oceans. Let me get that. Let me pull that up real quick. I'm sorry, I don't have a computer. I gotta use my phone. Revelation 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show you unto you the, the, the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Some people say that's our country. Some people say it's not. I think, I, I personally think that is talking about the United States. The great whore that sitteth upon many waters. We got the Statue of Liberty. We got the Gulf of Mexico. We got the Atlantic Ocean. We got the Pacific Ocean. Boom. Um, so we know what the Bible says about what's going to happen in this country. The Roman Catholic Church is not part of the fallen away because it has been a counterfeit from its inception in 325 AD. They've never taught Bible doctrine, so there is nothing for them to fall away from. What they are doing right now is preparing themselves to be ruled over by the coming Antichrist by gathering all religions into one anticipation of a soon rabble. Okay, true, true. But, and I said I haven't stepped foot in the Catholic Church in a long time. But um, when I did, the one that I went to, read from the Bible. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say they didn't when they did. You know, they did read from the Bible. But by all means, I'm not, I'm not saying yay, yay, Catholic Church. I, I, I don't go into them. Um, I, I don't. Pray to the Blessed Mother. I, I've never gone to confession. I, I don't, you know. It's just, I didn't have much choice. The, the, the Catholic Church believes baptism, water baptism when you're young. You know? And for a long time growing up, I thought, because this is what they indoctrinate in you, that if you're not water baptized, you won't go to heaven. That is 100% not true. And for a long time, I thought that. I thought that actually up until I'll, I'll, I'll say up until I had my my daughter, who's twenty nine now. I remember thinking we got we got to get her baptized. That is one hundred percent not true. Now, I'm not saying don't get water baptized if you want to get water baptized, but that's not okay. You have to, or you're not going to go to heaven. That's no. He who believeth in me should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know. But they did read from the Bible. They did, you know. Maybe the majority of them don't, but the one I went to did. But I, I don't go. Actually, I, I haven't stepped foot in a church in a while. Because most of them you can't trust today. I agree with Watchwoman in that sense, you know. Um, most of them you can't trust today. If you can find a good church that talks about the end times, talks about Jesus' return, talks about the shedding of his blood, washing our sins clean, reads from the Bible awesome 
but not many. Not many. The best way to pray is just go in the room by yourself. I always said when the rapture happens, don't be surprised if more prison or more jail cells are empty and church pews are full. The article goes on to say the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, I read that already. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm tired. Yeah, um, that's what they're doing. And I truly believe that the Roman Catholic Church will play a big part in doing that and following the Antichrist. I, I believe that. Francis has decided to punish Burke by revoking his right to a subsidized... Now she wants to come in. I'm sorry, one second. She, it's raining out here and she won't, she won't go outside in the rain. You are a wimpy puppy. You are a wimpy puppy. Let me put your bed out here. Put your bed out here. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that's Tom. I'm making my video. You want to say good morning? Oh, I'm making my video. I'm recording right now. Oh, if you want to say hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Tom says a lot when he's in. Anybody that's been asking him about how he's doing, his spirits are awesome and he's doing great. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the article goes on to say Francis has decided to punish Burke by revoking his right to a subsidized Vatican apartment and salary in the second such radical action against an American prelate this month. According to two sources, it is understood Francis told a meeting of the heads of Vatican offices last week that he was moving against Burke because he was a source of disunity in the church, said one of the participants in the November 20th meeting. Well, you know what? I commend this guy, Burke, for standing up and doing the right thing. Hey. Again, I'm not waving the Catholic Church banner, but he did the right thing. He said, this isn't right. He said, poor LGBTQ is not right. So he said, we can't, we can't judge all of them because it's the Catholic Church, you know? There are a few in there that are taking a stand, and this guy took a stand. We're not to judge, remember. But does that mean I'm saying we'll become Catholic? No. <laughs> no. Religion, Baptist, uh, Methodist, Catholic. It's like, no, it's. Religions. There's not religions in heaven. It's worshiping Jesus, worshiping God. Religions is something that man made. Burke's privileges of having a subsidized Vatican apartment and salary as a retired cardinal have been removed. That's awful. Because he was using the benefits against the church. Wow. Whoa. You see where this is going, guys? Right now, it's this situation. Soon it will be worldwide. Said another person who was subsequently briefed on the Pope's measures. Both insiders spoke on the condition of anonymity because they weren't authorized to reveal the details. Burke has not received any notification of measures being taken, his secretary said in a text message Tuesday to the Associated Press. And he's 75. God bless him. That's just horrible. You know? Wow. Burke, a 75-year-old canon lawyer whom Francis had fired as the Vatican's High Court Justice in 2014, has become one of the most outspoken critics of the Pope. God bless him. His outreach to LGBTQ plus Catholics and his reform project to make the church more responsive to the needs of ordinary faithful. Twice, Burke has joined other conservative cardinals in issuing formal questions to the pontiff known as Dubaya, asking him to clarify questions of doctrine that upset conservatives and traditionalists. On the first, they asked Francis to clarify his outreach to divorced and civilly remarried Catholics, and Francis never replied. In the second, they asked whether same-sex couples could receive church blessings and received a condition maybe in response, a conditional maybe in response. Then, on the eve of Francis's big meeting of bishops last month, 
known as a synod, S-Y-N-O-D. Burke presided over a counter-synod of sorts, just steps away from the St. Petersburg Square. There, Burke delivering a stinging rebuke of Francis's vision of synodality, as well S S Y N O D A L I T Y. Sorry if I mispronounce it. As well as his overall reform project for the church. Quote, it's unfortunately very clear that the invocation of the Holy Spirit by some has the aim of bringing forward an agenda that is more political and human than ecclesial, and I'm sick again, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing that word, told, uh, and divine. Burke told the conference titled the Synodal Babel. Burke has always defended his actions as being of service to the church and the papacy, saying it was his obligation as a cardinal and bishop to uphold church teachings and correct errors. Now, I don't know much about this Burke guy, so um, I, I, I pray that he continues to do the right thing, taking a stand, you know. Um, I pray for him. You know, he's, he's in his 70s. Now he has no apartment, no home. But you know what? Uh, no home, no, no no income, but the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. And um, so, so far it looks like, again, I don't know much about the court guy, but so far it looks like he's doing the right thing. So, um... If I'm wrong and he, if I find out he did things that weren't, weren't good, then, um, you know, I'll come back on and make another video. But so far, it seems like he did the right thing. He's taking a stand. He's saying no, you know. Now, is the Pope the Antichrist? He's an Antichrist. He's not the Antichrist. But he's an Antichrist because he's Antichrist, you know. There's a reason why when he became, when he was officially sworn in, lightning hit the Vatican. I've never seen that before. Wow. But he is an anti. He, he will work side by side with them. See, everything is forming together, you know. We can go home any time. I know we're all praying that it's soon. Every day more people are giving their life to the Lord, and that's awesome. That's very important. Sorry, that's my noisy bed. I'll leave the link in the description box, and um, if there's any more breaking news, I'll be back on. I'm sorry if I sounded blah in this video. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just having some, it's its just, I, I have a sitting at the end of my seat, anxious feeling, you know? So, yeah, I'm just very tired. Very tired. So, um. Hang in there, family. That day is coming. I promise you that. I can't wait to meet you guys. I love you. And I will be talking to you soon. I'm sorry the video was so long.